Good morning, Blair. Good morning, Warren. Very refreshing. Yes, dear. Warren, I must talk to you. Warren. Warren. Mm -hmm. It's Mrs. Woolridge. She called me. Her husband is so upset. About losing his business, I mean. He hasn't eaten a thing in days. And she cried so I couldn't understand what... Well, couldn't you... I don't mean to interfere, Warren, but... After all, you do have so many enterprises. Couldn't you just let poor Mr. Woolridge keep his... I mean, do you have to take... Uh, Too much better, Nora. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll fix another right away. And your attempt to alter the situation by a sentimental appeal of Mrs. Woodridge to my wife constitutes a gross invasion of the privacy of my home. Please be advised that my representatives will be at the offices of the plant at 8 a.m. tomorrow as per schedule to take formal possession of the premises. I should expect your cooperation. Sincerely, etc., etc. Your attorney, Mr. Thompson, called. He's coming by today at 9.15 with the Continental Papers. I told him you had a 9.46 appointment, but he assured me he'd only take two and a half minutes. Very good. Will that be all, Mr. Grisby? Uh, well, um, <clears throat> Miss Wilson, I've been seriously considering taking a trip to Havana for several weeks uh, for a rest and um, to catch up on some work, uh, you understand? Yes, Mr. Grisby? Of course, I shall need a secretary. I think Mr. Thompson is due, Mr. Grisby. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Will that be all, Mr. Grisby? For the present, Miss Wilson, for the present. Mr. Thompson is here now, Mr. Grisby. Have him come in, Miss Wilson. Mr. Thompson. Hi, laughing water. Hello, Mr. Thompson. Albert. That will be all, Miss Wilson. Yes, Mr. Grisby. Albert, I must ask you not to bring your golf club manners into my office. Oh, why don't you relax, Warren? Do you some good? This is a place of business, not a nightclub. Well, here are those papers on that stock transfer. Hobart is screaming that we're ruining him. The time to scream is before you make a deal. Not after. Let him scream. All you have to do now is sign those papers. <laughs> then figure out some way to spend all that money. I'll drop by your house this evening to pick them up. I should expect you at 8.45. Sharp. Good. Yes? Miss Wilson. Tell Peterson there must be something wrong with the air cooling system. It's much too hot in here. Yes, sir. Miss Wilson, there must be something wrong with the ventilation system. I smell something burning. And the heat is intolerable. I'll have Mr. Peterson immediately, Mr. Grisby. What are you doing here? I distinctly told Miss Wilson I wanted no interruptions. I'm very sorry to disturb you, Mr. Grisby, but I didn't combine Miss Wilson's desk. Impossible. There is no other way in. Oh, but there are other ways. You know the old saying, needs must when the devil drives. What's that got to do with it? 
You'll pardon me, but a great deal. I came to see you on a matter of great urgency, one in which I feel you can be of great help. Well, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Mr... Scratch. Just plain Mr. Scratch. Scratch? You mean you... Come now, I, I have no time for frivolous jokes. Oh, I can understand your confusion, Mr. Grisby. I am known by other names. Lucifer, for instance. And many others, not altogether complimentary. Now, may I? State your business, Scratch, and be brief. I have a business appointment in a few minutes. Your appointment will be 30 minutes late. A slight automobile accident. Oh, no one was hurt, I assure you. I see. Well, uh, Scratch... As you know, I run an important and ancient establishment. I have quite some time now. My offices, though time-honored, are, well, you might say, a little shop-worn and not quite up to my present load of work. You have no idea, Mr. Grisby, how many of my uh, clients I've just lost track of. Well, that's frightful. That's, that's impermissible. Others are checked in and they disappear into some corner, and I'm never quite sure if they are being processed correctly or at all. You mean that uh, after a lifetime of sin, it is possible that they do not receive their just punishment? Exactly, Mr. Grisby. Oh, I know you are as distressed as I am. Very careless of you, Scratch. Sleep shot methods. That's just why I need a man like you, Mr. Grisby. Well, state your proposal, Scratch. Spend two months with me. No more, no less. Put my place in order. Ensure the efficiency of my organization. Make certain that no sinner shall escape. In return for your services, I will give you a bona fide and unassailable document attesting to what you have done. Think of the prestige that will give you, Mr. Grisby. How do I know that you'll live up to our agreement? Oh, now you may say what you like of me, but the record will show that I always live up to a contract. Hoping you would approve, I drew up a contract for you to look at. It is very brief and to the point. Look. Seems to be in order. Oh, it is. I worded it. Personally. <laughs> well, Mr. Scratch, uh, I must say your proposal interests me greatly. But, um... but you'd like to think it over, is that it? I wouldn't think of pressing you, Mr. Grisby. After all, I have all the time in the world. Yes. Well, um, where can I... Um... Let us say I will be available whenever you are ready. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have other matters to attend to. Oh, don't get up. I know my way out. Thank you. Uh, um, uh, Miss Wilson, uh, never mind calling Peterson. It's much cooler now. Mr. Scratch? Mr. Grisby. I can't tell you how glad I am that you understood so clearly the importance of my proposal. Yeah, I shall be restored to point of departure exactly two months from effective date. 
in witness whereof. And now, Mr. Grisby, shall we be on our way? Well, there's no need to be alarmed. The journey to my domain is far simpler than most people imagine. You see, in a sense, I live right next door. To everybody. I see. You have carte blanche, Mr. Grisby. Look the situation over. Make whatever changes you like. Oh, by the way, I'd like you to meet my assistant who will function as your secretary. Oh, Martin. Martin! Yes, Mr. Scratch. This is Martin, Mr. Grisby. He's been with me a good many years and can answer all your questions. Martin, this is Mr. Grisby, our new temporary administrator. How do you do? Mr. Grisby? I hope you are satisfied with your title, Mr. Grisby. I see what you mean, Scratch. Yes, some changes are certainly in order. <laughs> Come here. Yes, Mr. Grisby. Read the date on that. Count Luca Piombo. Due date, September 16th, 1692. Oh, my. Oh, dear. Wherever did you find that, Mr. Grisby? I remember that Mr. Scratch and I hunted high and low for that. Mr. Scratch wanted particular. All right, all right. Find out if this uh, Piombo ever arrived. Yes, Mr. Grisby. <laughs> the active files. Yes, Mr. Grisby. Is that all? Oh, no, I have three more closets full, but I haven't had time to sort them out yet. I do the best I can, Mr. Grisby, but there's so much an inhuman being can do. Well, if can't do it, I know something that will. Yes, Mr. Benson. Well, I finally succeeded in getting an inventory on the supplies of brimstone. And I have organized it so that there will be a proper flow of materials to all parts of the establishment. You can see from this report that Martin's alarm was ridiculous. There is enough to go around for everybody. Very good, Mr. Grisby. And there is now a functioning statistical department. Excellent. That's just what I needed. Uh, there is one more thing, Scratch. Yes, Mr. Grisby? Martin. He has to go. Martin? But Mr. Grisby... I'm sorry, Scratch. He is completely incompetent. He's been with this office a good many years, Mr. Grisby. Several thousand, in fact. Length of service is no guarantee of quality of service, Scratch. Very well, Mr. Grisby. You are the administrator. I'll tell him myself. Martin? Martin! Yes, Mr. Scratch? I'd like to talk to you for a moment. Yes, Mr. Scratch. Uh, where was I, my dear? Oh, yes, yes, sir. And because of the inadequate lighting in Northwest section number 305A, Many of the inmates have been able to retreat into dark corners, 
and detected, and thus evade their labors. This must be corrected. Well, that will be all for now. I'm going to the receiving dock. I can be reached there in case of any emergency. Yes, Mr. Christie. <laughs> This is your last day. In a few hours, you leave us much the better for your visit. I shall be eternally grateful for what you have accomplished. I care nothing for your gratitude, Scratch. I call it my duty. Of course. But allow me the pleasure of thanking you. And now, how would you like your document made out, the one attesting to your presence here? According to contract, Scratch. According to our contract. Nothing else. Nothing special? No particular wording? Just a straight, business-like statement, but in unquestionable form, if you understand me. Of course. Well, I think I'll have a last look at things, just to be sure that uh, I'm leaving everything in good shape. Do that, do that, by all means. Oh, and uh, Grisby, be sure to have a look at how nicely Karen is managing things now. See you here in an hour, Scratch. Eternity, you know. Out you go. There are no return passengers on this boat. One way and one way only. Move along. Get out of the boat. Move along. Albert. You. Hello, Warren. How did it happen to you? Oh, I am not... I'm not really one of... What happened? Why are you here? You know why I'm here, Warren. If anybody knows, you do. Oh, it never occurred to me to look. Why, that's impossible. Well, you're my friend, my associate. Exactly. What do you mean? We should never pull that Wharton deal, Warren. I'm forcing old man Breckenridge into bankruptcy. Well, uh, that was business. I knew it was a raw deal. My sin was that I didn't do anything about it. Now it's too late. Too late. Too late. Mr. Grisby. It was hidden in the files. I was just bringing the files up to date, Mr. Grisby, as you instructed me. As I instructed you? That will be all, Martin. you, Wednesday, October 16th, 7 a.m. precisely. Cause, heart failure. No, no, 
like Tom B. Wednesday, October 16th. Why? Why does... That's tomorrow. Scratch. Scratch! Where are you? Scratch! Yes, Grisby. You tricked me. You did not tell me I was going to die the morning after I returned. You knew all the time. That's where you're wrong. I wouldn't have known anything about it if the excellent system you installed here hadn't brought your case to light. You mean I might have escaped? We might have lost track of you for a long time. Several centuries, perhaps. But this is unjust. I meant no harm. Oh, come now. You're talking to one of your ardent admirers and pupils, Grisby. Let me see. The time to scream is before you make a deal, not after. Am I quoting you correctly, Grisby? Please, Mr. Scratch, listen to me. I'll make amends. Anything. I promise. I swear. I must confess I'm disappointed in you, Grisby. I didn't expect a deathbed repentance from a man of your qualities. Very well. What is to be my judgment, my punishment? Well, that, it's rather neat. I'm quite proud of it, I must say. You shall be doomed to an eternity of making big deals and having them all fall through. Go now. Your guide is waiting to take you back. And I shall see you here tomorrow at 8 a.m. as per schedule. I expect your cooperation. Your glasses, Mr. Grisby. Yes, Scratch. Yes? If I am to make big deals, I shall have to have a staff. Naturally. And I shall insist on the right to choose my own secretary. You shall have her, Mr. Grisby. But she is to remain in your outer office through all eternity. <laughs> you will communicate with her only by telephone. <laughs> that is to be part of your punishment. <laughs> Follow me, Mr. Grisby. This is your last day. In a few hours, you leave us much the better for your visit. I shall be eternally grateful for what you have accomplished. I care nothing for your gratitude, Scratch. I count it my duty. Of course. But allow me the pleasure of thanking you. And now, how would you like your document made out, the one attesting to your presence here? According to contract, Scratch. According to our contract. Nothing else. Nothing special? No particular wording? Just a straight, business-like statement, but in unquestionable form, if you understand me. Of 
course. Well, I think I'll have a last look at things. Just to be sure that uh, I'm leaving everything in good shape. Do that, do that, by all means. Oh, and uh, Grisby, be sure to have a look at how nicely Karen is managing things now. See you here in an hour, Scratch. you know. Out you go. There are no return passengers on this boat. One way and one way only. Move along. Get out of the boat. Move along. Albert. You. Hello, Warren. How did it happen to you? Oh, I am not... I'm not really one of... What happened? Why are you here? You know why I'm here, Warren. If anybody knows, you do. Oh, it never occurred to me to look. Why, that's impossible. Well, you're my friend, my associate. Exactly. What do you mean? We should never pull that Wharton deal, Warren. I'm forcing old man Breckenridge into bankruptcy. Well, uh, that was business. I knew it was a raw deal. My sin was that I didn't do anything about it. Now it's too late. Too late. There must be one here someplace. Well, maybe there isn't. Is this what you're looking for, Mr. Grisby? It was hidden in the files. I was just bringing the files up to date, Mr. Grisby, as you instructed me. As I instructed you? That will be all, Martin. Dated you? Wednesday, October 16th, 7 a.m. precisely. Cause, heart failure. No, no, it can't be. Wednesday, October 16th. Why, why does, that's tomorrow. Scratch. Scratch! Where are you? Scratch! Yes, Grisby? You tricked me. You did not tell me I was going to die the morning after I returned. You knew all the time. That's where you're wrong. I wouldn't have known anything about it if the excellent system you installed here hadn't brought your case to light. You mean I might have escaped? We might have lost track of you for a long time. Several centuries, perhaps. But this is unjust. I meant no harm. Oh, come now. You're talking to one of your ardent admirers and pupils, Grisby. Let me see. The time to scream is before you make a deal, not after. Am I quoting you correctly, Grisby? Please, Mr. Scratch, listen to me. I'll make amends, anything. I promise, I swear. I must confess I'm disappointed in you, Grisby. I didn't expect a deathbed repentance from a man of your qualities. Very well. What is to be my judgment, my punishment? Well, that, it's rather neat. I'm quite proud of it. 
I must say. You shall be doomed to an eternity of making... Scratch. Scratch! Where are you? Scratch! Yes, Grisby. You tricked me. You did not tell me I was going to die the morning after I returned. You knew all the time. That's where you're wrong. I wouldn't have known anything about it if the excellent system you installed here hadn't brought your case to light. You mean I might have escaped? We might have lost track of you for a long time. Several centuries, perhaps. But this is unjust. I meant no harm. Oh, come now. You're talking to one of your ardent admirers and pupils, Grisby. Let me see. The time to scream is before you make a deal, not after. Am I quoting you correctly, Grisby? Please, Mr. Scratch. Listen to me. I'll make amends. Anything. I promise. I swear. I must confess I'm disappointed in you, Grisby. I didn't expect a deathbed repentance from a man of your qualities. Very well. What is to be my judgment, my punishment? Well, that, it's rather neat. I'm quite proud of it, I must say. You shall be doomed to an eternity of making big deals and having them all fall through. Go now. Your guide is waiting to take you back. And I shall see you here tomorrow at 8 a.m. as per schedule. I expect your cooperation. Your glasses, Mr. Grisby. Scratch. Yes? If I am to make big deals, I shall have to have a staff. Naturally. And I shall insist on the right to choose my own secretary. You shall have her, Mr. Grisby. But she is to remain in your outer office through all eternity. <laughs> you will communicate with her only by telephone. <laughs> Uh, that is to be part of your punishment. <laughs> Follow me, Mr. Grisby. All right, get a move on. Out of the boat, onto the dock. We haven't got all eternity, you know. Out you go. There are no return passengers on this boat. One way and one way only. Move along. Get out of the boat. Move along. Albert. You. Hello, Warren. How did it happen to you? Oh, I am not... I'm not really one of... What happened? Why are you here? You know why I'm here, Warren. If anybody knows, you do. Oh, it never occurred to me to look. Why, that's impossible. Well, you're my friend, my associate. Exactly. What do you mean? We should never pull that Wharton deal, Warren. I'm forcing old man Breckenridge into bankruptcy. Well, uh, that was business. I knew it was a raw deal. My sin was that I didn't do anything about it. Now it's too late. Too late. Too late. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mr. Grisby. It was hidden in the files. I was just bringing the files up to date, Mr. Grisby, as you instructed me. As I instructed you? That will be all, Martin. you, Wednesday, October 16th, 7 a.m. precisely. Cause, heart failure. No, no, it can't be. Oh, I know my way out. Thank you. Miss Wilson, uh, never mind calling Peterson. It's much cooler now. Mr. Scratch? Mr. Grisby. I can't tell you how glad I am that you understood so clearly the importance of my proposal. Yeah, I shall be restored to point of departure exactly two months from effective date. In witness whereof. And now, Mr. Grisby, shall we be on our way? Oh, well, there's no need to be alarmed. The journey to my domain is far simpler than most people imagine. You see, in a sense, I live right next door. To everybody. You have carte blanche, Mr. Grisby. Put the situation over. Make whatever changes you like. Oh, by the way, I'd like you to meet my assistant who will function as your secretary. Oh, Martin. Martin! Yes, Mr. Scratch. This is Martin, Mr. Grisby. He's been with me a good many years and can answer all your questions. Martin, this is Mr. Grisby, our new temporary administrator. How do you do? Mr. Grisby? I hope you are satisfied with your title, Mr. Grisby. I see what you mean, Scratch. Yes, some changes are certainly in order. <laughs> Come here. Yes, Mr. Grisby. Read the date on that. Count Luca Piombo. Have a last look at things. Just to be sure that uh, I'm leaving everything in good shape. Do that, do that by all means. Oh, and uh, Grisby, be sure to have a look at how nicely Karen is managing things now. See you here in an hour, Scratch. You know, out you go. 
There are no return passengers on this boat. One way and one way only. Move along. Get out of the boat. Move along. Albert! You! Hello, Warren. How did it happen to you? Oh, I am not... I'm not really one of... What happened? Why are you here? You know why I'm here, Warren. If anybody knows, you do. Oh, it never occurred to me to look. Why, that's impossible. Well, you're my friend, my associate. Exactly. What do you mean? We should never have pulled that Wharton deal, Warren. I'm forcing old man Breckenridge into bankruptcy. Well, uh, that was business. I knew it was a raw deal. My sin was that I didn't do anything about it. Now it's too late. Too late. Too late. for, Mr. Grisby. It was hidden in the files. I was just bringing the files up to date, Mr.